Today I'm showing you how to make your first t-shirt design in Adobe Illustrator. I'm going to be remaking a design that I did years ago that I really loved in order to show you guys the whole design process step by step. And all you will need is the latest version of Adobe Illustrator. So if you can check that box, let's begin. We're going to get right into this. So the graphic that I have on the left is the graphic that I want to remake. I made this years ago and I just really love it. So in order to remake it the fastest way possible and to make your guys' life easy, I found this graphic pack right here on Envato Elements and this is available to you. All you have to do is sign up to Envato Elements and you get this graphic pack. Um, basically you get 50% off annual subscriptions using the link in the description. So I have a special link set up just for you guys and again you get 50% off annual subscriptions. You don't have to sign up. You can find graphics elsewhere, but I really strongly recommend if you guys are taking graphic design really serious to sign up for Envato. It's honestly a no-brainer. They have amazing stuff. I only really need a few icons on this graphic pack, but I'm going to start off with these revolvers and maybe use some other ones. I'm not sure yet, but what I want to do is actually take these and select them. So I'm just using the direct selection tool and left clicking and dragging over it to select it, or you could just select once. They're already grouped, so that is good. And um, we need to start a new document so we can start designing. So let's go and go up to File New. And if you just open up Adobe Illustrator, you'll be able to just start a new document without seeing all this. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and maybe just do a smaller document for the sake of this tutorial. Let's do 500 by 500. We can use RGB color mode. We really don't need to use CMYK. And on the raster effects, let's keep that on high, 300 DPI, PPI, whatever. And then preview mode is uh, default. You can keep everything else the same and then hit create and then we have a new document. So that's perfect. Now what I want to do is take my revolvers and do command C or control C if you're on a PC and then paste that on the new document by pressing command or control V. And then of course, let's go ahead and copy the graphic that we want to remake and paste that as well. So we have it. This graphic looks extremely complicated for a newbie, but honestly, it's really easy to make. It's just circles essentially. So before we even start designing, let's go ahead and find a nice font that we want to use. So I'm going to type in Smith and Coles. I'm going to change that name up probably too. Honestly, I don't know what I was thinking with that name, but it's fine. Um, and I think I have one by heritage type called milkshake. I like this one a lot. So we're going to be using this font before we start making our shapes. Let's go ahead and go to the top right corner and you're going to see this little layout icon. It's very top right corner. And let's go ahead and select Essentials. Once you select Essentials, go up to Window, and let's go ahead and make sure Pathfinder is selected. Obviously, it's not selected right now, so we need to select that. We could take this and drag it above Layers, and it will snap into place. And now we have Pathfinder, Align, and Transform. So all those really crucial things that we need. Now we could take a line and honestly drag it in between and have the alignment separate from layers. And I always recommend doing that. It's just way easier to look at. And then transform, we could just take it and drag it right here. Again, if you don't see Pathfinder and all that, just go up to window and select it from this list. We are ready to go. So let's go ahead and create a circle by pressing L on our keyboard and then hold in shift. And you could drag out a circle about this big. So this looks pretty good. And we already have our alignment right here. So that's perfect. Left click on the circle and let's go to properties for a second. I want to introduce you to this panel because it's really important. So you could change things like the fill of the circle. You can make it any color you want, as you can see. And you can also change the stroke and the opacity of that circle. What we're focusing on is appearance. So we want to take the fill and change it to this little crossed out icon and then take the stroke and make it black. So pure black and then we can change that stroke to anything we want. So let's go ahead and go up to 10 points on the stroke, and that looks pretty good. Maybe even less, honestly. Maybe eight is fine. So now we should have something that looks like this. And as you can see, we're already kind of getting the shape that we're going for, so that's good. We need to create another copy of the circle, so just press Command or Control C on your keyboard, and then Shift, Command or Control V if you're on a PC, and let's just drag that down. And we are scaling our stroke with Transform. Easy fix is, to select that circle, take the eyedropper tool and just eyedrop the other circle and it will copy the exact stroke width. Anyway, so now we have two circles and um, we're doing pretty good. Now I could just kind of like click and drag this where I want it. And we are going to use a really fun tool called the scissor tool. You can hit, also hit C on your keyboard to go to that. And we are going to chop this in half. I'm just left clicking on each point to chop this in half and we should have the bottom off now. As simple as that guys, I'm telling you, it's really easy. Um, so now we have the bottom off and we can just kind of scale this down just a little bit. The only problem with what we just did is we created a shape that's incomplete, which is not good. Now we can't solid fill it easy. So what I want to do to fix that is go to my pen tool and I'm just going to left click and select each anchor point. As you can see, let me zoom in 
for this next part so you can see it. So select the top now, go to the pen tool, do the same thing. So I'm just selecting these anchor points right here. And you can see them because they're white little boxes. And as you can see, I just completed that shape now. And then from here, I'm just going to move it up just a little bit more. So now we have this like really cool eye shape. And that's what I was going for originally. So um, we we're doing pretty good. Only thing I need to do now is go down to my colors and we are going to actually import this into our swatches. So now let's go up to window once more and let's make sure we have our swatches open because I realized I don't have that and we could just drag those wherever. In order to convert this to a swatch color, all I have to do is select the color and then hit the little plus icon on the swatches menu and then press OK and it adds it to it as a process color which is fine. We have all the colors and we are ready to start coloring our design even. And it looks like we have the red color. So now we could just change the, the foreground color to that red color. And as you can see, now it's the same color. Really cool. And now we could do the same thing for the top color. Now we can take the pen tool and select once right here, select once right here, and we can just create a shape under this, which is obviously going to be hidden. And then we can just send that to the back by pressing command and then the left bracket and that sends it back. So the goal here is to kind of hide this shape, kind of like this. And I'm just using the direct selection tool to select the anchor points. So it's gonna look something like that. And what I wanna do is actually take this red color, we're gonna duplicate it, and we're gonna select it on the foreground and just make it a little darker. So I'm just gonna click and drag it down just a little bit. Another thing we could do instead is to take the blue value and just take it down to let's say 42%, I don't even care. That's fine. So let's go 42%, add that to the swatches, press OK. So now we have it on the swatches. So now I'm gonna zoom in on that shape that I just made with the pen tool, and we are going to select that color. So as you can see, now it's darker. And if I zoom in really close now to our shapes and press Command Y, it will go into wireframe mode. And this is going to allow me to be a little bit more precise with this line right here. So we're just gonna click and drag that on the other line. And now it's perfectly flush, so press Command Y again to exit wireframe mode. And instead of redoing this on the other side, we could just take that shape, go to our reflect tool, also press O on your keyboard to go to it. And now we could just hover in between this half circle and you can see that there's already an anchor point created. So if you hold an option and left click, so what we're doing is copying this vertically and we wanna keep the angle the same and we just wanna hit copy once. And as you can see, it copied it to the other side, and that's exactly what we want it to do. Now let's make some triangles by going to our star tool, holding an option, left clicking once, and let's make sure our point is set to three because that's how many sides a triangle has. So every corner counts as a, as a point, right? Now we have a triangle, but uh, what it's doing is it's copying the last properties that we used on these uh, little back sides of the banner, and that is because um, it just remembers what you just did, but we don't want that on there. So I'm gonna go to my properties, and we're just going to take the fill and make it just black. And then we're gonna take the stroke and make this nothing because we don't want the stroke on there. So we're just going to uh, cross that out. But what I wanna do is take it and put it on its side. So I'm holding in shift and then I'm just rotating it about uh, 90 degrees. And then we are going to hold an option now or alt if you're on a PC and I'm gonna click and drag down. Now we're gonna use a bunch of these. So I'm gonna click and drag it up just a little bit. So it's gonna be about this big. And then what I wanna do is zoom in on this. In order to duplicate it, it's really easy. You just hold an option or alt if you're on a PC and just like kind of bring it down a little bit like this. And then we can press control or command D to duplicate it a bunch of times. That's all we wanna do. Now let's go ahead and group them by pressing control or command G. And then we could just kind of squish them a little bit more. Now that we have these like little spikes, let's go ahead and duplicate them. So hold an alter option and left click and drag and let go. And then we're gonna take this original copy, go up to effect, warp, and let's add an arc real quick. So I'm gonna go about, let's say right here, and this is kind of trial and error. Again, we're just going to kind of click and drag it into place. I am i don't really, I don't care if it's perfect, by the way. I just wanna make sure it kind of fits the same, you know, arc. And now I just wanna take my eraser tool and literally erase what I don't want. And it's very destructive working this way, but this is how I do it. Now we could use a layer mask to get rid of the extra, but I'm just going to use the eraser tool and erase around the parts that I don't want. And then we are going to, reflect those vertically. So I'm just going to hold an option, left click again on this middle anchor point at the bottom uh, banner, and we're going to reflect and copy this vertical. Same thing we did last time, guys. Now let's press L on our keyboard to go back to our ellipse tool, and let's click and drag out an oval that we can add to the center, and let's make sure we select that yellow color, and then we can use our brackets again. So Command or Control, and then left bracket, and that will send it behind everything. And as you can see, we have the color behind everything, which is what we wanted. Now let's add some text. So 
what I wanna do is make another circle, and this is going to be used for our text only. So we just wanna make it big enough to fill the entire shape. And if I send it to the back, it should look something like this, see? And um, I wanna make it a little smaller. Go to your type on a path tool, and we have our circle selected. We wanna kinda of hover over the edge of the circle where this like faint blue line is, and you're gonna see this little wavy line, and that's the line you wanna left click on, and that's going to add text around that circle. So that's pretty much all you have to do. We're just gonna use the same exact thing. So Smith and Coles, same exact thing. And then from here, we can take the font size under properties and just raise it up all the way. We want this to be really large. And then we could take the paragraph alignment under properties. As you can see, everything's under the same menu. And then we could just center that. And then obviously this is going to be off, but the good thing about the type on a path tool is there's these little anchor points that you can click and drag around and you can use these to center it. We need to change the baseline shift on our, our text because it's touching the circle and we do not want that. We want that off the line so it's more centered with the banner. And the easiest way to do that is to left click on the text twice. So if you left click twice, it will actually select all of the text at once, which is what we want. Now we can hold in shift and option and just press up on your uh, keypad. We just wanna make sure our text is that yellow color and that's pretty much it. So now we have something that looks like this. Now we just do the same exact thing for the bottom circle. So let's make another circle. Now let's make a duplicate copy of our revolvers and just kind of put them in front of everything. See what that looks like. So again, we wanna make sure they are perfectly centered and just, like I said, see if we like them or not. Now I just need to select all of the strokes that we already made and just make sure they are that same uh, stroke color as the revolvers. What I wanna do is try to outline my text and do something cool with it. So I'm gonna press Shift Command O on my keyboard and that's going to outline my text. And then from here, what I wanna do is go up to Object, Path, offset path and we are going to offset our text path just a little bit yeah two is good on that press ok and then maybe let's select a different color the reason why i did it this way is if we go to color separate anything later on the stroke is on its own layer and i like the way that is because it's just so much easier for print shops so i'm going to do the same thing for the bottom i like the fact that it's just a really simple black stroke so we're going to go ahead and stick with that same pattern so go down to path offset path we're doing the same exact thing and now let's go ahead and take these icons and add them in place and see what they look like. This looks really, really cool, guys. I think this looks pretty good as is, so we're done. This is it, guys. And um, if you have never used Illustrator, you should have a pretty good grasp of how to make a design in Illustrator now. If you guys have any questions about today's tutorial, let me know in the comment section below. I would love to help you guys out with this. I'm always checking my comment section. If you're not being rude to me, and you're just being polite, I'm going to respond to you. That's all my friends. If you guys wanna support my channel, watch my next video right here by clicking the end screen. And also don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe, it really does help. But uh, that's it for me, I'll see you guys in the next one, all right? Yeah.